Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today, including a conversation about infidelity that Gavin and I were just having. Oh, my God. Uh, not uh, that either one of us struggle with it, but Betty Rock was super quiet, and I really want to hear her opinion on this. I don't know if she was working or just tuning out. Uh, uh, I you was didn't working. Hear it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because Betty Rock has Same to have thing. her headphones on during the show a lot, and like she's cutting up audio. So we were talking about infidelity, okay? You were? And, yeah, yeah. What brought that up? That's my point. N- n- neither one for us. But like at church recently, one of the pastors was doing this message, and he was talking about counseling somebody like 20 years ago. And uh, they had been uh, married. The guy had uh, an infidelity. It was like one. And uh, this was like years and years later. He told the guy, you need to go confess this to your wife. And I was like, oh, I think that's such a bad idea, like personally. Mm -hmm. And so Gavin and I were debating this. Like if I had been with my wife for, say, 20 years and I found Mm -hmm. out she had an indiscretion or cheated on me year two, but we went and had this great life otherwise, Mm -hmm. I would never want to know. Because to me, I'm like, it feels selfish. Like, you're just alleviating your guilt, and then you're destroying what this other person has felt Mm -hmm. for 20 years. Now, if you fought the whole time and you had a miserable marriage, then maybe the cheating was indicative of that. Then you just get it all out in the open and maybe start over. Like, I could see that. Yeah, but aren't relationships built on honesty? They are, yes, but is sometimes being so honest you can destroy somebody, is that the crueler thing to do? Wait a minute. This is coming from the guy who's like says things all the time, yeah. and you're like, what? It's honest? What? Oh, I know. Oh. I know. So it's the same thing. You're... I know, but I don't, that's what I'm saying. I think there's. I think that this would be more damaging. I'm saying for me personally, I would not want to know. And telling your wife that her jeans make her look big isn't damaging. That is something we both struggle with. <laughs> like we both have to deal with that. Uh, it's and it's visible to everyone. This other sin is hidden. Uh, um, no, like, I would say. I see, but well, here you go. Look, the, I know. I Here's the nine. Sides. But see, I, yeah, I want to know as a woman, what would you think? A part of me would say I do want to know because. I would want him to be honest with me and not feel like he had to hide something from me. Yeah. Um, but but I, I also tend. think I also think yeah. that if you knew and you could figure out what it was that called him caused him to stray, mm-hmm. maybe you two could work on that together. Sure. And. Keep had, it from happening in the future. Had it had problems? Had you had problems in your marriage? Yeah, you go, this is an indicative thing. But if so, And again, I'm, I have to be very clear. I'm not, A, it's not about me. Uh, and B, <laughs> I'm not advocating for lying. I'm not advocating for infidelity or trying to cover up sin. Like, it's none of that. It's just a conversation that we had based on what this pastor said. And I thought, oh, I disagree with that. Because like you say, you know, you want him to be honest. No one truly wants honesty we we don't we all say oh i want you to be honest with me no you don't like because there are things we think about each other there are feelings we have there are thoughts we have opinions we have that should never actually ever be expressed but let me ask you this let's yeah. say that y'all you had an indiscretion yes two two years into the marriage okay and then 20 years you're strong doing great yeah. and she never knew about it but she's constantly saying things like I'm so thankful for you and that you've always been loyal to yeah. me. You've always been honest yeah, with me. That's that twisting we've the knife. Never had an yep. issue. But but she's that's speaking out of honesty. Right. But that's the guilt you would have to live with. Like you would have to own that guilt and be like, okay, and I'm just gonna But I'm does gonna... the guilt tell you that you're feeling? Does that mean you should get it off your chest and say something? Because in essence, like that you you, you You're exist, lying to her by not saying you it. You exist mm. in I think you exist in two planes that ultimately only benefit you. Per yeah. se, so well, in a sense, so if you come clean and are honest, you're alleviating your own guilt. So that right. is alleviating your own guilt, or you exist in the plane where you got to have your, you know, indiscretion, got right. to have that that mess up, and you never got to, and you never had a misstep There's no with penalty. your wife. Yeah. There's no penalty. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you exist in a perfect world in that world in that plane but in the other one you are doing the quote unquote right thing for yourself right yeah 100 percent. because no one likes to get caught for their sin but you could almost say too if you're living in that guilt that is your own personal mm-hmm. hell because sure. i've heard people talk about 
um, what is hell? And there's there's big debates. Is it this fiery place? Is it, you know, separation from God? You know, is it totally uh, being annihilated? You know, and there's part of me that thinks, oh, it is like that hell is that separation from God. Mm-hmm. And you live in that world that you have to deal with, you know, and it's the same thing with with the this scenario is you have to deal with that knife being twisted. And that is your punishment. If you truly feel guilt and bad, Mm -hmm. that's your punishment, you know, because the reality is, is if you don't feel bad, then you really didn't make amends. You didn't you didn't repent to God. And so do. Yeah. Do you have to do you have to go to this person and go I sinned against you if they're not aware of it that's a tough call and again I'm and again I'm this is not to find a loophole for myself but I honestly think about like if this happened for like in my situation I can't even imagine how devastated my wife would be like how crushed she would be and but what would she be crushed by she would be crushed by all of it. I mean, she'd be crushed by the fact cr- that I stepped out. But would and she be crushed by the fact that, that I you lied. kept it yeah. from her years, for that yeah. many years? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She would, yeah, both would hurt her equally. Um, probably, so is it better to keep it going? Probably the lying would hurt her even more. I get. I, I think she would say that, but I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what we say. Like, uh, it's, it's really that I wanted you not to lie to me. Like, uh, I don't think that's really what hurts you. But uh, mm-hmm. is it better to keep it going? I Boy, I don't know. I, and, and the thing is, I know a lot of people, there are a lot of people that are listening right now that might be in this place or were in this place. You mm-hmm. know, that's why if I would love one day for us to have the aftercast version where we could take phone calls, because uh, mm-hmm. that would be super oh. interesting or take FaceTime calls with it. Like, oh, I would love that uh, to hear people's perspective on this. But I don't know, just where Betty was kind of silent on it. I was curious what her take was. So you would want to know. OK, and let me throw this in there. You've waited a long time to get married, okay? Mm-hmm. So you finally find the guy. With that. I've already dealt that with that in my head. I know, but you find the guy, and you're yeah. like, oh, good. And then the guy, what if he actually stepped out on you? After we got married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh that would, I would be livid. And you, Yeah, 100%, because you're like, I did everything right, you know, and then you do this. So would you then want to know or not? Or would you rather be blissfully unaware? Still think I'd want to know. Really, I think and Tough. to provide just I I don't know if this is hit, hitting the nail on the head completely perfectly. Sure, but bib- biblically, yeah. So Proverbs twenty seven five through six says, "Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend." And so again, that's not I don't think that's hitting the nail on the head in terms mm-hmm. of keeping a secret, right? Per se, but I feel like that does have a a nature that says better to get things out in the open. Sure. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. I wonder if the, it is discussing this concept of... If your secret is keeping uh, your marriage not as good as it could be. The yeah. Secret, yeah, the secret like is the that you... the guilt and the shame yeah, the are keeping you... you were disloyal you were disloyal to your, mm-hmm. to your wife. And I guess, yeah, it is It is tough. Because we're. I think we're taking it from a, from a just a purely human how are you going to feel right standpoint and i do think the bigger deal is between you and god right i mean that's that's the big thing you have to make right first yeah. but yeah it's it's a tough thing i mean gavin earlier said well the best thing to do is just not cheat absolutely like, like that's that's what the but that's what i mean that's where all this stuff in the bible you know you think well man the bible is this archaic book and it and it doesn't really um, you know, how is it applicable to my life? It's like, oh, wait, maybe if I live by some of these Ten Commandments, yeah. maybe if I do this stuff, I will have a better life. And, I don't and, have to tackle the, yeah. the what if situations if I don't. Yeah, these are non issues in, in your in your relationship, you know, and, and how great is that? Um, and if people chose to live like this more, they would have less problems and we'd have less divorce. Probably mm-hmm. we have a whole lot of less things. Um, Speaking of rebuke, oh my gosh, I got a rebuke from somebody uh, yesterday for not calling out the Olympics, uh, <laughs> the uh, trans drag show on the on the radio show. And this guy is like, you literally use the term rebuke and everything like that. And I'm like, dude, like, 
you don't know the world I live in, and I try to balance the stuff between like what the ministry wants and thinks is applicable for on the air and then what I want to take on and tackle and stuff. And and I'm like, I can never win. You know, I'm always going to make somebody upset. And so I just, I literally told him that I'm like, so welcome to it. Mm. And, and then uh, he was like, well, I'm just telling you that you need to stand up and, you know, be bold for the faith and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm like, well, the aftercast, we talked about it, you know, more so, but I, I, I really do. As I was thinking about this even more, like the clip of audio that I played on the aftercast of that pastor going, you know, this is great that uh, this happened, that they're mocking Christianity because it's the reason you mock what works. You go after what's successful, you know, and and the more I think about things like Jesus loved everybody that was a mess and these are broken people that are going to do broken things. And I think we can say, hey, I disagree with that. Here's why. But when we want to go at everybody and we got to go angry and we've got to mm-hmm. save the world, you know, for Jesus and like we've got to do, uh, we've got to stand boldly or he's going to spew us from his mouth. I think we can say, hey, that's not good. I don't agree with that at all. And not be a jerk to people uh, mm-hmm. uh, in doing so. I think we can extend truth and love with people without having to get into altercations or fights and that become more polarizing and more damaging where you lose influence into speaking into something. If you look at the LGBTQ community, how militant they are about against like the church, like you've lost any right to speak into my life. I'm not going to hear you, you know, like your agenda. But when I talk to somebody on a one-to-one basis like it happened uh, at this wedding I was at. And so I'm the officiant of this wedding. So they probably think I'm a clergy, you know, and I uh, met this girl and she was super nice. And she's like, oh, and this is my girlfriend. And we were talking and I didn't feel the the need to in that moment go, you know what? Do you, you know what the Bible says about your lifestyle? You know, because I would have lost any influence in them, you know. And so I think I, could, I had a wonderful conversation with them. And I don't know what God does with that. You know, maybe they had been burned by somebody in a church position before and they go, oh, this guy was different. You know, he didn't judge me. And that's what made Jesus so approachable was he didn't judge people. You know, there's enough people yelling at each other today. And this guy wanting me to get on a soapbox and yell about it and, you know, and stand for the Lord. God God is not surprised by any of this. Like God's not looking down and going, oh, snap. I did not see that coming. Hey, thank you so much for picking up the charge and fighting all this for me because I didn't know. Like, know that your sins will find you out and be and know that God is not mocked. Like, when God has enough of something, God writes it. Mm-hmm. You know, when it gets so bad that it's like, and, and, and when it gets that bad, he usually, like, wipes out things. You know, like, when it gets so bad, like, he's going to regulate all of this stuff that we get so bent out of shape about, you know? Yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to find a place as I get a little older too, because you know me, Rock, I get mad about everything and I'm trying to find a place. I know, right? (laughs) Where I, I, because I was talking to a friend of mine who's even older than me and he goes, man, I fought everything for so many years because we're both radio guys. And he's like, I'm just tired of fighting all that stuff and Mm -hmm. it's just not worth it. It makes me miserable and it's going to happen. It's going to be what it is. And as I started thinking about that, I was like, you know what? He's actually right. In the place of life I'm in, most things that are big hot button issues are not directly affecting me. Mm-hmm. But I've always been the person that will take on a fight for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I have to learn to let some of that go and let other people that are younger take up the stuff and let God do what he's going to do, you know, and not get into all these altercations with people. So anyway, but that was, yeah, that was a fun email. But I actually, I, I actually... I think I handled it well for me. I was honest and I spoke my truth. Uh, And then uh, (laughs) he was a little triggered. He emailed me back this long email again, justifying his position. And I just looked at it and I went, okay, I I hear you delete. (laughs) And like before, because I would have gone eight emails deep and I'm just like, sounds exhausting. Yeah, exactly. I was going home and I'd be exhausted every day, hating opening my email because of the argument I was going to have at the other end of this. And this is in Christian radio. This is a crazy thing. I've spent more time arguing with people in Christian radio than I ever did in mainstream radio. Hmm. Ever. Yeah. The well, nastiest they, emails yeah. I've gotten from people have been in Christian radio. Yeah, Far more they, than in rock radio. They expect and want you to do exactly what they think is the righteous right. thing. Right. And everybody do. has a different version of that. You're yeah. never going to be 
holy enough for somebody, you know, and and you just can't win. Well, and it's funny too if you're talking about just the, you know using pure anger or using like righteous anger. There's there's only I think there's a time and place for something like sure. righteous anger, and I'll tell you what, it really only showed up one time for Jesus yeah. that he went and rebuked. People but do you know openly. who do you know who he rebuked? His closest people. He all rebuked the time. people. You know, he rebuked people for taking and making a mockery of Christ and, mm-hmm. and the church. He rebuked them for that. So it was technically the religious people that were yeah. selling things and the church. That's what he got bent about. Like he never went at the sinners. Like at the sinners, he met them with grace and love. Mm-hmm. All right, go forth and send no more. He met he met everybody that everyone else thought was a train wreck and was the scourge of the earth, he met them where they were and he met them with grace and love. The only people he called a brood of vipers were the religious people. Those are the people that he's had the biggest problem with because I think he knows they damage things so much. And so I think for me, I want to be somebody that leaves less of a damaging imprint here for my faith, you know, and be somebody that does exert kindness you know except at the airport I, that's the only caveat because that that is purgatory like that is all bets are off there when you're traveling and things get canceled i even think god would be like i'm gonna throw a fit i'm gonna flip a table here right now uh i'm obviously kidding uh but anyway wow we got a little deep on that stuff there <clears throat> wait for it three two one no i'm gonna give it a beat oh, instead okay. of a yata data and then i'm just gonna go Rock, you look like you have something. What do you got? Thanks. Uh, So have you noticed that when it comes to popular music, bands aren't much of a thing anymore? Yes, and it's it's really weird. But they'll have band names, but it's like one guy. Like Owl City is one guy. Dashboard Confessional. Yeah, it's like one. Cochran and Co. Yeah, and so, yeah, it's weird. Like, they're trying to fool us. (laughs) Well, that's like five guys, yeah. But they're trying to fool us into thinking that they're bands because, yeah, you just don't get you don't get super groups anymore. Yeah. Well, well, I will say though that that's the funny part about one example of that that theoretically didn't work was when Tenth Avenue North decided to not be a thing. Yeah. And Mike Donahue tried to do the solo thing, right? And then he reformed Tenth Avenue, Avenue North, North, but it wasn't theoretically the. It was same. Mike Donahue. Yeah, it's it Mike Donahue, but it's with new. His new boys. Hired guns. Yeah. Well, so bands aren't that much of a thing anymore. Solo acts are streaming more these days, which caused someone to write an article online depicting what they call, quote, the slow death of bands. So in the year 2000, 29 bands made it to the top 100 billboard chart. That's it. Well, it's a third, almost. But I mean, it gets higher. The next year, it got up to 32. Okay. That's pretty good. But that was the peak. So there's been a steady decline to the point where there last year only two bands made made it to the top 100. Really? Yeah, only two bands. That's hard to believe. But they're probably saying in the whole year. Yeah. The rest have been solo acts. Yeah, I just I find that hard to believe, yeah. you know. Well, one of them was a country band, Old Dominion, which oh, I, yeah. I believe they're still together. They're still putting out stuff. Yeah. Jumping and the off a rope swing. Other one, the other band was a very popular pop duo from the 1980s. And they made it? And they're still making it in the top 100. It's Wham! with Last Christmas. Oh, yeah. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very okay. Next day. I think we need to uh, define band. I never, ever, for a hot second, <laughs> considered Wham! a band. It was it was George Michael who was a singer, and then it was Andrew Ridgely who put a guitar on for some reason and this dance around. Uh, like to me, that's not a band. That's a, it's a duo. Pop duo. That's a duo. Like I wouldn't even well, call them a band. So you're saying he didn't play guitar? He might have. Who knows? He uh, like. I think once they start p- playing a, a, an instrument, that makes them a band. No, right? I think you have to have more people that are that are genuinely in the band. It's like even. Um, uh, what's their face? Hall and Oates. Okay, Hall and Oates to Hall me Oates. is a duo. Like it's a duo. That's not a band because your drummer, your keyboard player, your bass player, all of those guys. No one knows who they are, and they are interchangeable. It's Hall. It's John Hall and what's his name? Oates. So Daryl, o- on- Daryl Hall and John Oates. Okay, so on Google it says a band is a group of people who perform instrumental and or vocal music. Sure. 
But uh, but again, but defining With a distinct name. Defining band means like they're all doing it and they're all they all have stake in it. Like it's for example, Google says. I know, but I disagree with Google. Uh, <laughs> like okay, if you look That's at him. let's take let's take uh, Mercy Me for example. Okay, mm-hmm. Mercy Me has the five guys or whatever that have been in this band, and they've had a couple places changes, but like man, coming up on thirty years or something mm-hmm. crazy like that. But they've they've all been in this band. They've all been consistent. It wasn't like you got rid of a drummer and a bass player who don't get you know profit sharing in the band. They don't get rights. Mercy Me did it right because every time you write a song, you list who wrote the song, and then that's the and you get paid extra when that song plays. It's the music rights, the publishing rights. Mm-hmm. They gave everybody equal in it. So Bart gets the same as the drummer Robbie, you know, and stuff like that. Most bands don't do that. Most bands are fighting to get songs on the record Mm -hmm. because they make more individually if they were the ones that wrote it. Mm -hmm. So that's a real good example of a a group of guys that want to keep it as a band without all of the drama. But then you've got other bands that, like the Afters, great example, the Afters for the longest time didn't keep a steady drummer and uh, bass player they had just Josh and uh, Matt, and then they ended up finding a drummer they liked, and they kept him, so it became kind of the three of them. Now you're sneaking up on band. You're just one guy away. You need a bass player, a drummer, a guitar player, what? and a singer. Wait a that's minute. It. Wait a minute. And so that's a band. let's say the afters, those yeah. three guys that you are pointing out, they come in a tour bus. Yes. You see them coming to your event. Yes. And people need to know that they're here what do you announce oh you, you say, say it's the afters yeah you say the afters right. are here oh yeah you don't say oh the band is here right you say yeah because it's not a band <laughs> that's my point what? it's not a band <laughs> heck up if you look this is going back to what how you fight for everything yeah it's 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 technically <laughs> that's it's, a band if it's a couple guys that own the rights to the name it's a name if they own the rights to the name but it's like they all didn't come up in the garage together playing and like slugging it out now you're getting too specific i know no that's that's aerosmith was a band Wham is bon a band. Bon Jovi was a band. Wham is a band. Wham is not a band. You take that out of your mouth. <laughs> you say Bon Jovi's a band. Bon Jovi 100% oh, is a band. Don't go, don't leave me How do you, wait, you hold on. He has just said go. something so just, incomprehensible no, no, just, and stupid. It just makes me think of the SNL skit where they're like, Oh, What's the band the name? name? Yeah. Uh, I, I like yeah. the name Bon Jovi. We were going to go with Natural Disaster. Guys, guys, it's not my fault I have a band's name. No, Bon Jovi is 100% <laughs> a band. Do you know how I know this? John Bon Jovi, one, singer. <laughs> Richie Sam. Bora, two guitar player. Alec John, such a uh, bass player. David Bryan. Did they get rid of these people? And no. Then they... uh, keyboard player. Um, Tico that, Torres, uh, drummer. You're, it's you're been showing, all it those guys. Matter. Yes, it's all those We're guys. We're saying that's a band. Yes, but they're just as a band. No, as the don't say it. Are oh, I thought you were gonna say wham. wham. No, don't say <laughs> it. <laughs> they're the same thing. No. Now I will say like Ozzy Osbourne. Solo. Solo act. Yeah. Okay. Mariah Even Carey. Though, solo. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, Taylor solo. Swift. Solo. solo, solo, absolutely. But you got Wham, you no. got the Beatles. You Beatles got is not Beatles Aerosmith. is a band. Beatles is hundred percent a band. Aerosmith, one hundred percent a band. <laughs> you what got about, like, you a, got Lady Annabella. What about like band? We are, we are messengers. <laughs> yes, about, I'll give you that. What about like a We Are Messengers right we, now? Uh, uh, solo. Had, you think solo? Yeah. Because no. it's Darren. Yes, it's no, Darren. Because the only he Irishman. has the same guys with him. No, that are no, he doesn't. They've switched out. No, he doesn't. They've no, they switched, switched out a out. whole bunch. We but are messengers. So? We are messengers is Darren, and Darren is We Are Messengers. <laughs> okay. That's what it. A, I'm very I passionate about this. Perfect, are. perfect example. Please within Christian, go. Within Christian, yes, within go. Christian music, there are a lot of. <laughs> I'd say bands when it comes to the things like Hillsong United, yeah, that's Elevation Worship, like they, they they have a lot of those bands. But they trade out people all they the time. They trade people out all the time. But that's, and the name doesn't belong to them. But that's what makes them, them a band. Mm, good the point. Church. They're out. I think that's what, no, I think they're that's a worship what group. You're right. They're a group. <laughs> I wish, I wish, had I known, I would have. But back 10, 15 years I w- if I had had the thought, hey, he gets passionate about a lot of dumb things, Kings. Yeah, I could make a compilation of all the dumb things that, that I've been passionate, passionate about. about. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm a passionate person. <laughs> You, you know it's burned me here a couple times. <laughs> Boy. And also burned me, too. That's true. Yeah, you're collateral damage because you hitched your wagon to this dumpster fire of a person. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Well, you got some birthdays for me? I don't. Okay. Well, but I have uh, a great question. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, oh. I love the, the questions, but minute. I feel like I've talked so much. Yeah, about the dumb things. About okay. what is considered a ban and what is it. Yeah, and, and you still learned nothing. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. All I know is that Wham is a band. No, it is not. Gavin, take that with you. Wham I'm, is I'm a band. I'll make the title. Thank you. Thing. Perfect. Wham is not a band. Wham, Wham is a band. Write it Wham down. Wambolins. Okay. Here, here's the question. This one is from Heather. It's a great question. Okay, Heather. If you designed a t-shirt for another member of the Wally Show, Ooh. what would you put on it? Hmm. I mean... I'd make one for Betty that says Wham is a band. (laughs) No, and I would be living truth. Um, No, I would put on Gavin's, I would put a picture of a bathroom. Yeah. And I would put where is the bathroom because Mm -hmm. odds are he's going to need to know no matter where he's at. And if someone can just approach you without you having to ask Mm. and they can just tell you, that helps a lot. Just make bigger signs for bathrooms i'd make one in spanish too don't they esta el baño so in case he ever goes mm-hmm. on a mission trip to yeah. mexico uh, he's able covered to. i'm gonna yeah i'm always gonna it's always yeah it's always important it's a picture information. of him shrugging with his hands out mm. and then a toilet and then yeah. saying, where's the bathroom, where's the bathroom? i would <laughs> i would make a uh t-shirt for gavin that had abs on it uh, Ooh, yeah. What would it say? You know, it just has they, abs. They just don't have them. Yeah, it's just, you're wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> they're like, look at these abs. As, uh-huh. as as I get. It has yeah. to have words in a picture. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm absolutely fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it's abs, but it still says where's the bathroom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me see. For Betty Lou, oh, it would be personalized. It would be uh, Betty Lucifer, and it would just be a pitchfork. Mm, that is so rude. <laughs> For yours, I would make it a hoodie. And it would say um, hashtag uh, main character energy. And then mm, when you put the hood it. up, it has a, cr- a plush crown. Oh, I love that. So that when you put the hood up, yes. you're wearing a crown. I do have main character energy mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I go with just a cow. Like your shirt would just have oh, a cow. Oh, cow in a field? In a field. <laughs> I tried to explain cow in a field to somebody the other day, like, a, like a, probably a millennial. Uh, and uh, they weren't fully getting it. And uh, but that's like, because it's hard to get. I, well, yeah, it but you make sense. No, you've gotten it. Like, oh, you mean oh, the, the, I, yeah, the but, reason I do it? Uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but I have realized working with you more and more, and with Gavin too. I think it's just a guy thing. Maybe yeah. that there you, you men so just tend things. to be guy in a field, uh, count, count a field. A field all the time. Well, yeah. It's what like, it is. why don't you just see that and just do it? Well, if you don't know what cow in a field is, too, it's like cows in a field, they get rained on and they just stand there. I guess this is what my life is. I'm getting rained on. And I do so many things like that. I'm like, well, I guess this is just the way it is. Cow in a field. Um, like, for example, if my wife has a headache, first thing she does is look for Excedrin. Like, I need a, my a Excedrin migraine. Like, instantly. Has it always in her purse. I get a headache and I'm like, Dad, come, I got a headache. This stinks. And and I don't do anything about it. Like and that's what's field. so crazy because you always say that men are quick to want to solve a woman's problems. <laughs> right. But issues. then what if yeah. they that's are right. your problems? Right. You're not going to oh. solve those. You're just no. like, oh, just like I guess this is where we, we go. We have today. to have something to complain about too. Yeah. I think inherently, like we have to have something that we're content with or overcoming like, oh, yeah <laughs> like yeah every weak people take the uh medicine okay. for uh on headaches that, on an easy note, life does not yield out. a good testimony <laughs> that's right exactly okay <laughs> all right that's wham is a fan let wham take us out no, here we go I hate you. Yeah, yeah what a crazy band love it a crazy band <laughs> love it oh it's a man band all right that's gonna do it Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.